from Austin, Texas, it's The Cube, covering Pure Storage Accelerate 2019. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to The Cube, the leader in live tech coverage, Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. We are in Austin, Texas for Pure Accelerate 19, and we're excited to be talking with another one of Pure's happy, successful customers. We've got Scott Pedron, the storage architect from OneGas. Scott, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. So OneGas, give our audience a little bit of an overview of what OneGas is, what regions you serve, and then dig into your role as a storage architect. Of course. So OneGas, we're a natural gas utility company, um, so we, we I'm more the, the downstream, the inline. So we actually deliver the natural gas to our customers, residential and uh, commercial. Um, we operate across Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas in various regions, including Austin. Um, and my role as storage architect, um, I help, I mean, basically one man show. So design the storage, implement the storage, uh, run the storage. And I also help out in other areas, such as uh, the servers, the DBAs, networking, kind of a little bit of everything. So I've been a Pure customer for about three years, we were talking before we went live. Give us an overview of your storage infrastructure, your IT environment, three years ago, and what the impetus was to evaluate Pure. Sure, so we were previously uh, an IBM storage shop. Um, had IBM sand volume controller backed by DS8000s, flash system 820s, um, store-wise V7000s, and you know, so different tiers of storage all being managed by the SPC. Uh, as is common, you know, the, the warranty runs out on the, the DS8000, so it's time to look at a forklift upgrade or whatever the case may be. I had a plan all in place to, to replace it with IBM, um, but we are a fully regulated utility company, so I did my due diligence and brought in some, some competitors um, EMC and Pure Storage. Heard Pure Story, um, especially the Evergreen Storage model, and you know the the five and six year total cost of ownership was actually pretty close. But once you went beyond that, th there was no contest. Pure won hands down. And again, as a utility company, we like predictable flat costs. So the fact that you know we could do that and not have to have this multi-million dollar expense again in just another three or four years. So I got to ask you. So you know TCO done a lot of TCO studies, and the biggest yeah. component of of total cost of ownership is is labor, humans. Yeah. And so presumably you did a full TCO. You looked at it. I'm surprised to hear you say that the five-year TCO was about comparable, because pure is you know it, the Kool-Aid injection says it's simpler, it's more modern. Wouldn't that save headcount or at least you know, FTE? It could, if we were a more complex environment. Um, but as it stood, there's me and one other guy kind of as my backup. So there's, I mean, you still have to have somebody to run it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's what I'm asking. So sometimes uh, CFOs will go, well, wait a minute. If we're not going to reduce headcount, I'm not going to accept that as part of the, yeah. the cost reduction. Is that what's going on here? Because we're going to shift labor to more high value sure. activities, so the, oftentimes the CFO doesn't count that in his or her business case. Was that the case, or did you find that, that because you're so small, it's, it really didn't matter in terms of the management complexity? I'm interested in your it, thoughts on that. We, we didn't factor in management complexity when we were calculating TCO. It was, yeah, okay. it was purely the cost to uh, acquire the storage okay. and then the maintenance. Oh, so it was no management cost, no, no. human capital, okay. And you said it's you and somebody else? Correct. And is it, have you now spent less time managing the Pure than you did previously with the IBM? Oh, for sure. It, okay. I, and when I first got it, I was, I was afraid, I'm, am I going to work myself out of a job? <laughs> the Pure? Because oh. it was so easy. Okay, so if, I, if, if, if you think about, you had two FTEs managing storage. Yeah. Um, what, what percent of your time prior to Pure did you spend managing storage versus doing other stuff? I mean, a rough ballpark. Yeah, just, rough ballpark. Um, was it 50-50, was I'd it? I'd say, I was maybe doing 60 to 70% doing just pure storage before, and now it's 20. So you've, you've gone from 60 to 70, let's call it 65% of your time was spent managing storage, tuning, troubleshooting, yeah. provisioning LUNs, 
provisioning more capacity, <laughs> planning, all those things that yeah. we love it. Down to 20%. Uh, probably. About, roughly. Yeah. I'm not going to hold you to it, but sure. well, I guess we're live TV, so I will hold you to it. <laughs> but, uh, but that's a significant savings. I mean, you, you can calculate that over five years, right? Uh, take your fully loaded cost, and boom, that adds up. What have you done with that, that, that time? What are you now, I mean, I'm so presuming I've, uh, you're not just hanging out. You're <laughs> no, publicly, my boss is watching, right? Publicly traded, <laughs> regulated utility, somebody's watching, right? No, of course not. <laughs> um, no, I've been able to, to be a lot more proactive, so helping out like I said, with the, the server teams, VMware teams, on consulting them, on you know, looking further. What is our long-term goal, our strategy? How, what's the five-year plan type of thing? Instead of just fighting fires all day, or you know, oh, next week, you know, we have to deal with this performance issue that's going to be coming up. So you've been able to be more strategic. For sure. And then I have one more question on this whole, because there's, there's intangibles there that everybody always overlooks but actually when you live them, they make a big difference. Has there been a quality effect? In other words, it, instead of putting out fires, you're doing things that are more strategic. Do you feel like you have better quality infrastructure and does that affect your business? I would say better quality in the fact that it's more consistent. So we ended up sweeping the entire floor um, with all pure storage. And so all of production and non-production in our case is all on Pure. So the consistency of the, the latency and the response times and the performance that you can get out of the storage, it's, there is no more performance problems. It just, it doesn't exist. And in terms of workloads, I know you're, you're running Splunk on Flash Array. Give us a picture of that infrastructure, the workloads that you're running on it, and the stakeholders, I can imagine, in, you know, in different departments and different functions within OneGas that are using this system and not even realizing it because it's just available, it's there. But before Splunk real quick, we had one application, we went to Flash, uh, they thought their, their processing was broken because it completed so quickly. <laughs> That's a good thought to have. Yeah, so they, they, it finished so fast, they, they came back to us, it's broken. I'm like, no it's not. <laughs> What's your use case with Splunk? Is with it security? Splunk, uh, we, uh, so pro it started out as cybersecurity. Uh -huh. and that's kind of what brought it in. But it has since expanded to monitoring, analytics. Uh, we actually use it when we roll out our trucks to the field to ensure that we're meeting the SLAs. Um, there's, there's so many different areas where we use Splunk. I, I'd have to refer to my notes. So infrastructure ops is kind of Operational has become sure. this yep. sort of big thing, right? And 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 automation and things of that nature, or not quite. There uh, not or? so much automation yet. All right. Um, but they we do have a a, a plan or project to, to start doing more automation and other analytics. I presume. I mean, it's all about analytics, right? Yeah. So. We have a lot of our application teams, like our web development team, they use Splunk a lot for their application monitoring and trying to be proactive on that. Thinking about the security use case, um, you know, security practitioners often tell us, well, it's just, we get inundated with incidents, and you know, we don't have the time to sort through them all. Does having um, Splunk on an all flash array, you know, high performance all flash array, does it affect the response of the security team, or how does it affect the business, the, the, the security side of the business? I, I, I'm not able to answer that directly, but I can say that you know I have seen them do a lot of, you know, select all type queries where you know they're just searching for a needle in a haystack type of thing. And previously, when we had multi-tiered storage, that those queries took forever. But now that it's all flash, it it's really quick. So they spent more time waiting. Yeah. Than they do now. Yeah. I mean, that could be a two-edged sword. Maybe they have more stuff to sift through now, but <laughs> 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 that's somebody else's problem. <laughs> right. Well, the, the data security is critical because you're dealing with customers' data, right? And, and almost every month, we hear about data breaches in the public, whether it's a bank or it's a social media platform. It's, unfortunately, they're becoming quite common. Yep. But when you're dealing with, with personal customer data, that's a big concern. Using, and some of the things that we're hearing Pure talk about is what they're doing with data protection and data security, and also kind of, kind of the shift from not looking at data protection as an insurance policy as much as it's, it's an asset. 
because you have so much information, you're storing it for longer, more and more customers, more data. How is that being reflected up, up the chain, even up your chain of command, and to the executive folks in terms of being confident that what they have your customers' data running on in those three states that you talked about is on a very solid, secure platform? Well, security, it's, it, it requires multiple layers. So, pure having always on encryption is a big help. Um, so if we do have you know, a failed uh, module that we have to be, be replaced, I don't have to worry about you know, making sure that it's securely erased, destroyed, and all that, because without the encryption key, it's virtually you know, uh, crypto erased. And then of course we have all the security agents you know, on the servers and the applications, and, and our secure, cybersecurity team manages all of that. And what about cloud? What are you doing with the cloud? What's the strategy? Cloud, we're, we do cloud where it makes sense. Um, for instance, you know, ServiceNow and O365, we're, we're customers of both of those. So SaaS stuff. And mostly SaaS. Uh, in my opinion, doing cloud, just doing the lift and shift, um, and using cloud as infrastructure as a service doesn't make a whole lot of sense for, for us anyway. Um, as a utility company, we're very pro-capital. Uh, so if we just shift that to another provider, that's all operational. Whereas, take ServiceNow for example, it changed the operational model, right? And you had right. a, a clear business impact where it wasn't a lift and shift, it was a, exactly. a exactly. transformation really. Exactly. Yeah. What, um, where do you want to go with, with, with pure and storage infrastructure? Is it just like, hey, I just want it to work. I want it to be rock solid, dirt cheap, and highly available, you know, high performance. Or are there things that you would like to see pure do that can help drive your business? Well, I think the announcement today of the Flash Array C is what I am probably most excited about in that um, I'm, I've already asked my, my business partners to you know, get me some pricing, some quotes on can I use that for my backups as a backup target um, instead of you know, near line SAS, you know, SATA disks. So that, that's exciting for me. Um, the fact that it's going to be the same software that I'm used to and it, that's all plus. How are you protecting your, your flash arrays today? Uh, we just, we're implementing Commvault right now. Okay. Um, so we do leverage Commvaults, uh, it's called IntelliSnap, so it basically yeah. does a pure level snapshot and then we can mount that on our media agents. Okay, nice. and then, so, using uh, Flash Array C, that's the right model number, Correct. I think. Mm -hmm. Do you see that having, a, so obviously you want to use Flash if it's cost effective uh, for everything. If, if it's cheaper than spinning disk, why not use it? Do you see any advantage, in theory, for recovery? Recovery for sure. speed. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, it's, if you need to do a fast recovery, it's, I mean, it's on flash. The, with, what I'm looking most forward to, though, is the, even the ingest of the data, the initial backups. Um, if there's a lot of, you know, querying and, and trying to figure out what's changed and what's not, that can be a lot of disk thrashing on traditional spindle drives. So let's look into the future a little bit before we wrap here. You've been a pure customer for three years now. Yep. Presume you've done some upgrades and swap out some controllers in that time? Uh, not quite yet. In, in the coming months, we, we will have our, our first evergreen controller swap. Um, but we have done, I've, had, I've actually had a failed controller. So effectively the same process, where one controller is down and didn't have any issues with performance or no downtime, no, down no disruption. Time. Absolutely not. I've uh, even upgrades where they you know take one controller down and upgrade it. I'll I'll do those during business hours. Because You're comfortable with the uh, go ahead, sorry. Just because there's no performance degradation whatsoever. So you're obviously comfortable with the architecture. You seem like a pretty happy customer. A lot of people, some of the critics will say, oh, it's a dual controller architecture. That doesn't bother you. No, not at all. <laughs> of, I, I had to ask with a straight face. Um, what would you like to see Pure do? You know, if, the, if, if, if Charlie G and Carlos are sitting right here and say, what's the one thing that I could do to make your life easier? What, what would it be? Besides cutting price. <laughs> you can't say cut price. Yeah. Um, I, you know what, well, that's a great question. I, 
I think what I would have been asking for top of mind would have been the the lower tier, the, what they came out with today, the, the C. Do you, you know, another criticism from some of the competitors is they don't have tiering. And when you talk to Purebo, they go, well, we don't, we don't need tiering, we don't believe in tiering. What, what are your thoughts as a practitioner? Would you want to have like a tiered array, like high, high performance flash, lower, in the same array, or is it not something that is, is I, necessary I don't think so, I, I go back to the consistency. You know, we, we have all of production on flash now, and it's, I don't have to worry about performance. Whereas before, I was constantly having to, to monitor and manage, you know, is all the right stuff on the right tier, and it, it, it was a headache. Yeah, so automated tiering wasn't so automated? Is that, is that a it, fair statement? It worked fairly well, but there were some cases where it, it didn't. Yeah, so you better just throw it at a flash and it'll take care of itself, right? Yeah. yeah, cool. So you've got a foundation now that's going to allow OneGas to evolve continually, and we look forward to hearing in the next year or so when you go through that first big evergreen upgrade, yeah. how that goes. But it sounds like you're, you made the right choice and that foundation that you've got is pretty strong. And, and then so many other layers of the business are benefiting and they don't even know it. Because as you said before, one of the constituents thought something was broken, it was right. that fast. Correct. So well done on your decision. Thank you. Pure. Thank you so much, Scott, for stopping by theCUBE and talking with Dave and me about what OneGas has been doing, how you're succeeding, and we look forward to hearing more of your success. Thank you. Great to have you. Thanks. Appreciate it. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE from Pure Accelerate 19.